Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video about Tolarian Community College's most recent video on the Challenger decks. He has taken a hard stance against MTG Finance, essentially calling them out. So Strictly Better summarize it very, very well. Usually when the MTG Finance community is against a product, it usually means that the product is really good for the average player. So here's something I didn't see coming. As many of you know, I do not like the MTG Finance community. I do like MTG Finance and I find it interesting, but I've told you this many times, even many years ago. As soon as the counterfeit came out, my interaction with Wizard of the Coast was, hey, we're gonna reprint everything into oblivion, Therefore, don't worry about it. I immediately sold off my a large chunk of my collection. I did keep my Falias, but I even sold off my Stoneforge Mystics, which I love them just as much as I love Falia. But at the time, I was very spooked out by those emails because I was like, wait a second, what is the solution? The solution is you're going to reprint everything into Oblivion? Now, this didn't happen for some time. But now it is true. MTG Finance, so this is from the MTG Finance subreddit, they do not like this. Here you have a moderator with the big M. Please do not lose out on the irony of this gentleman talking down about us MTG Finance users. Working to create our own prosperity while ending the video begging for money through Patreon. Not really taking his side, but that's really not really ironic to me. He views the aims of the MTG finance community as being detrimental of the actual player base. And he's not completely wrong in that. I agree with Tolarian. If you are trying to make money from standard, stop. You're not going to. If you're trying to make money from speculating in modern, stop. These are two formats that every single card will be annihilated. The value has zero value to me. I have no interest in speculating. I have no interest in investing outside of artwork. So Filea, yes, I need her for other uses. I know somebody will say something about other uses. But I would highly, highly not, not recommend you ever buying more than a playset of a standard card you need because it's going to get hit. I can't tell you when. Well, I can tell you it will be hit during rotation. I can't tell you if it's going to get hit before then. And I can tell you modern. I mean, you look at how many modern products come out. Modern this, modern that. Now we have themes of modern. Now we have core set again. We have commander. We have anthologies. Anthologies used to be like once in a blue moon. Now it's once, I think, once or twice every year. We had plane chase anthologies, commander anthologies. We have another commander anthologies coming soon. The professor is absolutely right, as is strictly Beller MTG. This game is not meant, standard and modern are not meant to be you're not supposed to make money from it. It's just a game. It's just a game. You play the game. When I go to Dave and Buster's and I'm playing the crane game, it's nice when I win sometimes, but I don't have any expectation I'm going to come out there a winner. Like I'm going to come out there spending 50 bucks and having $200 in prizes. That's not typically how a hobby works. Another hobby, for instance, that I really enjoy doing. Fishing, hunting, golfing. No one thinks, hmm, I'm going to make money back from doing this. For my license, right? I'm going to get a hunting license or a fishing license. And I just got to catch enough fish to uh, justify my license. No, I release all my fish and I'm a terrible hunter. Like, I just like to have fun. It's fun to hang out with friends. 
here you you have a whole community, uh, MTG Finance community, we us them, that's dedicated on trying to find value, trying to inflate prices, trying to sell you this quote hot information. The only people making money from MTG Finance are the people making money from the MTG Finance community, writing articles behind paywalls, having patrons, having podcasts that mention their patrons every single second. No one else makes money. And here, this is kind of like when you're in a Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme, and a Ponzi scheme is, it's a Ponzi scheme. Some people are so embarrassed that they just write it off and they don't, they never mention it. They're like, oh, well, that wasn't me. Was that you? Oh, it wasn't me either. I, I guess no one got ripped off on this uh, Ponzi scheme. Oh, that's great. In the whole neighborhood, you could see this a lot with Herbalife. Herbalife is a multi-level marketing scheme, I guess I would call it. And the scheme works. It's Herbalife is some type of like vitamin thing. It doesn't really matter what they're selling. It could be Mary Kay. It could be Avon. It's the same Tupperware, same principle. You give someone the opportunity to create a business. La La Rue, that's another one that's been recently in hot water. You give them the dream that I'm going to sell you this dream. You can be a Herbalife. You can have this Mercedes-Benz Herbalife car. It's so ugly. And you can meet all these celebrities like David Beckham, the Prime Minister of India, I think is on Herbalife. All these famous people who are promoting and loving Herbalife. That will be you one day. I'm selling you, not Herbalife, but the opportunity to own your business, your own business, to be independent and to make a truckload of cash. All you got to do is sign up 10 more people like you. And those 10 people sign 10 more people. And MTG Finance is such BS. The community is selling this dream that you don't need to go to college. You don't need to be educated. You can just make a living from MTG Finance. How difficult? I'm, I'm sure people have done it, but I'm positive they're not making six figures sorting bulk. I don't understand um, how you, you have so many different paywalls, MTG Price, MTG, um, what's the other one? Speculation, quiet speculation. Even uh, Star City Games, their MTG Finance used to be behind a paywall. I don't read any of these articles, so I don't really care. You have all these people who want to make money from you, giving you MTG Finance advice, and the advice is such BS. And I'm glad this has happened. I enjoy MTG Finance as a hobby. If I break even, just like I go to the casino, if I break even the casino, I consider it pretty good. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. If I break even on doing MTG Finance and I have a lot of fun finding the bulk, you know, reselling and trading with my friends, then it's worth it because I'm. it's entertainment. It's not work. The concept that I'm going to train you to become an MTG Finance guru and then you're going to run your own business is so stupid. I don't know how... Anyone could think this is going to work. You're a secondary vendor of a used product. Let's, let's say for what it is. Speculating on cardboard. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Let's say that you get really good at it and you're the number one MTG finance person. You take your resume, you go to Merrill Lynch, you go to Wall Street. You think they're going to take you? You think they're going to give you an introduction interview? No. The skills that you've learned, picking bulk and doing all this kind of really, are not. it cannot be applied to a real job. So if you spent five to ten years doing MTG finance, I'm sorry, but you probably don't really, you, you could have spent five to ten years at a Walmart and then you would be a manager then you maybe you would be a district manager if you work your ass off as hard as you would work in MTG finance or as to survive you could be something you absolutely could be something and those skills would transfer you could actually put that on your resume okay um small aside on Tolarian 
I don't agree with all everything he says, but I do agree with this: that if the product is good, the MTG finance community won't like it. If the product is bad, the MTG finance community will like it. So their their goals are actually, in many cases, reverse of what the normal Magic players would be, which is to play the game. I have always said. I've always said I supported reprints, so I'm glad that Tolarian, who has much more influence than the MTG Finance community, is taking this hard stance. This is the correct stance to pick. If you want to speculate on MTG Finance, Standard Modern, leave that alone. You might be able to do some reserve list cards, but that's it. And at that point, you're pushing all the speculators into one area, and then you're telling, hey. No modern for you, speculators. No standard for you, speculators. You can just mess with those our reserve list cards. I think that's perfectly fine.、Uh, I think you can have, you can have, your cake and eat it too. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.